What's up YouTube, this is Wendell aka BitNative with another video on work from home tech. While doing a video on a full life cycle web platform to self host your business or your hobby website, I have a utility that I use for everyday use in creating the content for this YouTube channel. Uh, this particular piece of software is called QO Notes, and it allows me to do the full life cycle of a video uh, to a website. When I say full life cycle, I mean from using this note taking piece of software, going on a website, using a web extension that integrates with this software to grab URLs, to grab images for information that I'm researching to put into the content. I can save those files off, it tracks those files, I can tag those files, I can export those files to uh, Markdown language, which is a very common and ubiquitous language that's used on GitHub to create general readme files. I can export it to PDF documents. I can export it to HTML documents. It integrates with Nextcloud server that I also did a video on how to stand up your own Nextcloud server and self host that. This piece of software is open source. It's free. It runs on FreeBSD. It runs on Linux. It runs on Mac OS. It runs on Windows. I installed it and going through the list of features made my video for the web server itself end up being over an hour. So I think it warranted creating an actual video just to do the product review on QO notes. So let's get into a review of some very high productivity software for your general note taking and revision controlling of those notes, as well as sharing them and have them centrally located no matter what platform you choose to use. So let's go ahead, dive into it and get some work done. So let's go ahead and get the installation of QO notes installed real quick. So if you go over to the site, qonotes.org, uh, that's the URL. I'll leave that link in the description down below. Uh, so once you go over there, you have a couple of options over to the right hand side. You've got the option for the GitHub repo, or you can go over to the installation. Uh, if you go over to the installation over to the left side from there, you'll see installation for Windows, 64-bit, Mac OS, Debian, SUSE, OpenSUSE. Uh, there's Snap packages for Ubuntu. You can even have the install on Arch, CentOS, uh, all the way down to FreeBSD. Or if you want to build everything yourself, you can do that as well. But we're going to go ahead and install on Windows. So let's go ahead and select the Windows installation. And from here on Windows, it says to go over to the releases on GitHub. And that takes me over to the list of software. Uh, what I can do is select the Windows version, which is the zip file. And I've downloaded a couple of times, but I'm going to go ahead and download it again. So what we can do is we can take this. I'll go ahead and I will extract it right here in my downloads folder because one of the beautiful things about this is it will run directly from the folder. So if you don't have admin permissions on your machine, then you don't necessarily need it uh, because most people have access to the My Documents folder. And what you can do is take that, as long as you can download it, extract it, and then you can move that over to your Documents folder and then from there, um, you know, wherever you want to put it, actually, you can go here, right click on this and you can say, pin this to the taskbar, which I had it there already. Um, and I deleted it. Let me go ahead and click this again because it said unpin. So we'll go ahead and pin that there. And then once you do that, you can click it and it's going to ask you if you really want to run this software you just downloaded from the Internet. You say more and it says run anyway. Yes, we're going to run it anyway. And here's the 
first run uh, documentation screen that it opens up when you first run it. Uh, this is just a readme, sorry, not a readme, a note file uh, that it opened up for the very first time. So what we'll do now is before getting into any of the configuration for QOwn uh, notes itself, we're going to go over to Nextcloud. I want to show you a couple of installs over there. Uh, we'll do work from home, work from home tech. Log in here, and I'll just go over a couple of the package installations that you need on Nextcloud. So if you have admin permissions on Nextcloud. Uh, you should be able to go down here to apps. If not, you need to talk to the administrator for your server. Uh, there's a couple of notes associated. We'll search for those. Uh, the first one you need is notes. You got to have that or you're going to have problems getting this to sync at all and interface. Your folders won't show up. Uh, then there's the API so that QO notes will be able to talk back and forth uh, for the synchronization between the next cloud. There's one more in addition to the notes uh, and the QO notes API as uh, you'll also need the delete. So you'll also need that one. And delete files. So you'll need that one as well. So once you have those installed, uh, you should be able to go back over here to QOwn Cloud, or, and you should be able to go in here to Settings. Now, by default, you'll see there is an actual default location that is set up on your machine for these files. And if you take a look, it should be located in your uh, user folder. We'll go ahead and take a look at that. So if you go to the C drive, users, and this is a Lenovo user, uh, there should be this notes folder. This is essentially where it's going to install it. Uh, it utilizes a SQLite database. Uh, there's the markdown file for the welcome, and there's the markdown uh, file for the markdown cheat sheet. If you ever lose the location of that cheat sheet, or you need it again, you can always go to help and it'll open up the markdown cheat sheet for those that are familiar with or, familiar with, or need a refresher on markdown. Uh, so going back to the app itself, getting back to the app itself, uh, what we want to do is we want to go in here to the app and we want to go to the settings. Uh, so that folder we just saw was the notes folder and it was set up as the default folder on this machine. But what we want to do is we want to set up synchronization to Nextcloud. So I'll say enable Nextcloud. And what we'll do is I'm going to say connect as Nextcloud. If you have multiple servers, you can have multiple connections, um, but we're just going to say connect, uh, connect to next cloud here. Here, so we'll put our local next cloud machine here, and then we'll go back and we'll go ahead and push that connection. So now it's picking up that I've already logged in to next cloud already. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to do that first. Uh, we'll say log in here and then we'll go ahead and grant the access and now the account should be enabled and we should go back over to Nextcloud and username password were, for, were set successfully. So now that's set and now you should be able to come here and you should be able to click on connect and everything is okay. Now, once you have that set up, what I like to do is I like to set this up with kind of a local versus a remote configuration. So if you take a look at this, you see that we have this default location 
and that's on the local machine in that notes folder that we saw previously if you remember that this is the notes folder in your user user directory with the files uh, but what I want to do is I want to set up a remote one so we'll go in here again so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and go into file explorer um, because there's one more piece of software that we need or sorry I want to go over here to Internet Explorer because there's one more piece of software that we need locally and what we're gonna do is go to uh, Nextcloud um, there's Nextcloud what we'll do is we'll go to Nextcloud and I want to download the client for this machine we'll say clients plural and then we can download uh, the desktop app so what we'll do is we'll download the Windows 10 desktop app 64-bit and we've got that now we'll open that file we'll just go ahead and say next and install that so once this installs this will be the automatic background synchronization between nextcloud and your local machine which is also another requirement that you need but it's going to make things a little bit smoother uh, once you finish and you launch this it's going to say you got to restart your computer uh, but before you do that go ahead and log in we said it was this little local uh, instance of nextcloud and it's going to take me back to this again and grant access again and that is essentially what you need but once you do that you'll see it comes up and it says hey what's the local folder you want to do we're gonna go ahead and leave that folder as Nextcloud and we'll say use virtual files instead of downloading uh, the contents immediately and then we'll say connect and then here you'll start to see all the synchronization occur um, that looks good and then you'll actually see down here in your taskbar in the system tray uh, once it stops synchronizes you'll actually see here's Nextcloud and it's up and running um, from here we're almost there with one more step now we need to go back over to QOne Cloud and what I'm going to do is I will go back up in here to the notes folder and I will say so we have that default set up but what we'll do is we're going to add a folder and we're gonna call that next cloud so now we have next cloud but what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to that Lenovo folder and we're going to go into our next cloud folder and we're going to set up notes and we will select that folder now once we do that we can click on OK now the reason I did that is because sometimes there was challenges with the automatic syncing um, so when I do that I'll get an option to use the default and I've got a couple of those generic basic installed automatically when you put the software on the system and now I have this next cloud with nothing in it and what I can do is I can work remotely on everything I need to work on uh, and then if I want to take this I can move to that next cloud folder or I can copy it and then I can copy it over say yes 
And then now if I go over to Nextcloud, I can see it's over here on Nextcloud and it's gonna start syncing this with the actual uh, server files that are on the server. So if we wanna take a look at that, we can take a look at that. Open up the browser. And we go here, and if I go to my files, I can go to my files and go into notes, and I can see there's that copy of the SQLite folder, and there's that readme file that I just did the synchronization on. Um, now, getting back to just a couple of the last minute notes here. So here we can install that last thing I was saying. Um, there's an actual extension that allows you to copy and paste from the internet the images as well as hyperlink. So we'll go over here to the Chrome extensions and there's the Chrome Web Store. We'll go here and we'll do QOn notes. There's QOn notes. And what we can do is open this up a little bit further so we can see all the buttons and options. One one extension. Go here, add to Chrome, add extension. What we can do is now we've got it installed and we can go to a website like anything that we may just be happening happen to search and we should be able to right click and say QO notes send page to QO notes so now I want to go ahead and cut the video a little bit short it's getting a little bit long so Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We still got much, much more content coming. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up or leave a comment. If you don't like it, leave a thumbs down, whatever you need to do to relay your message or concern to me so I can address it and try to improve the channel. Thanks for tuning in and get some work done. Peace.